Hello people, today I have a Cinema 4D tutorial for you guys. So today we're going to look at something a little more interesting than uh, what most normal Cinema 4D tutorials would be. We're going to attempt to recreate the Lego movie water effect. So if you've seen uh, like a large body of water or an ocean in the Lego movie, you'll see that we'll have these, bro these bricks that just build and unbuild themselves to create this nice oscillation as if it was a stop motion wave created with just Lego bricks. And this effect is so fascinating and really cool to me. And I could not find anything online for a tutorial on Cine in Cinema 4D and how to create this effect. So I figured why not bring it to you guys straight up and create my own tutorial. So if I scrub through here, uh, you'll see that these blocks build up and build down, create this really cool wave uh, water simulation. So it's very much like stop motion. And I think it's really interesting how they accomplish the effect. Uh, I believe they did it in Maya, uh, if I'm correct. I'm not sure, but when I searched tutorials, all I saw were, was a tutorial for Maya on how to create an effect like this. But this can be applied to several different things, and you could try whatever you want with this. So here's an example of what it could look like when it's rendered and has some lighting. Of course, this isn't a very good render, but you know, you get the idea. So let's delve into this. So here's my project that we have for, well, how I created it. So we have a cube with some displacement on it, a matrix, and a cloner. We don't all these things I'm deleting are just uh, things I had for temporary render. So these are the bare bones of the project: a cube, a displacer, a cloner with a Lego brick in it, and a matrix object. And this is how we created the effect. So I'm just going to open up a new project rather than trying to show you how to do it all like this. So the first thing you do is create a matrix, hit MoGraph and then hit find matrix. Now matrix, matrix objects are really interesting because basically they create a whole bunch of points rather than actual geometry. Uh, so that way it's really fast in your render in uh, your uh, viewport. Uh, so I just increased it, increased the count of this from like 10 or whatever it was, start with 3 to uh, however many I needed. As you can see, if we turn up these numbers really high, we don't get bogged down because it's not actual geometry. These squares, or I mean cubes we see, are actually just nulls. So first thing you need to do is change the mode from uh, endpoint to per step. Now this means that when you turn up... Uh, like the size of the matrix, that all the cubes will remain symmetrical. This is a very vital step. Make sure the mode is set to per step. So uh, right now I feel like this needs to be a, a little bit wider, maybe a little higher. So let's just increase our Z and then there we go. So now we have a pretty good dense grid array. Now. We do need to make these cubes right here a little bit closer together just to make them really tight. So uh, 4.125 seems to do the trick. So I'm just going to put those in and perfect. We have our grid array pretty well figured out. So now we could continue to the next step. So first thing we need to do uh, is hide our matrix because this next step, it's just, it's going to get the way. Uh, so just hide that with this uh, and then we'll create a cube. So once you have your cube, you can expand it to whatever size you want. Now make sure that your cube is not larger than your matrix, which it isn't right now. Because if it is larger than your matrix, you'll, you'll get all sorts of weird problems. Uh, so let's just turn to display type something else and uh, increase the segments. Now we want a few segments on the X and Y axis, but not the Z, you know, the X and Z axis and ignore the Y. This will give us some uh, geometry to displace when we use this cube to create our waves. So next step, hide the cube, show the matrix, and then change the form from cubic to object. Now, simply drag your cube into the object, and voila. So now, if we move our cube, you'll see that the matrix is deforming based on that cube's geometry. Move it down, move it up. So it's creating and destroying these little nulls depending on whether or not our cube is inside those nulls. So now we can do the magic and throw on our uh, displacement. So if we go to our cube and select one of our deformers, displacement,
placement. And then take displacement and put it under the cube and we could go into our shading tab and throw on some noise. So if we enter our noise and turn up our global scale a little bit, we should be seeing something. Maybe turn up the height. Um, oh, okay, there we go. I think my viewport just didn't refresh for some reason. That's rather odd. So, okay, so I'm going back into the shader and I'm just gonna turn up the global scale of the noise a little bit more. Um, maybe a little bit more than that even. Nah, a little bit more. And there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, okay. So now we can add some animation to this. Uh, so if we hit turn up the animation speed, you'll see, wow, we get all sorts of crazy effects. Uh, so this is really cool at the moment, but if we hit render, oops, we can, we can see our cube. We have to make sure our cube is also not a scene by render because if we render, you see, you see we can see it. Just double click this second circle until it's red and then it'll be fine. It won't be showing up the render queue. So this matrix object you see, the one with all the squares, like I said, it's not actual geometry. If we, if we click render, you'll see that it's just nothingness. This matrix only contains information. So what we do need is a cloner and a cube. Now, we need to first scale our cube to be about the right size. Uh, this cube is just for demonstration. We'll actually replace this with a Lego brick. This is just to get the basic idea down. So we'll scale this to be around the same size as these cubes that are inside our matrix right now. So scale that down, move it over, move, scale the Z, move it up, scale it down, oops, scale it down, move it up, scale it down again, move it up, oops, too much, and scale it up, perfect. Now if we move this over, you can see we're getting there, turn down the Z, turn that even more, and we're pretty close about right there and that's pretty good okay so now that we got that we, we could throw that into our cloner now our cloner is not doing what we want right now it's set to linear so we want to change the mode from linear to object and now we're going to use those points from the matrix to generate all those clones so drag the matrix into the object and give it a second. This is gonna bog down your render, well, your uh, viewport quite a bit, so just be patient. I'd actually re recommend creating like a uh, render settings tab and you can just go to that while it's doing this. So it's not bogged down. Okay, there we go. So we got this and as you can see, it's a lot of geometry at the moment. Uh, it's not really a lot of geometry so much as it is like uh, so much calculating for Cinema 4D to be doing. So if you click on render instance, it should run a little bit faster. And give it a second again. There we go. And even now it's still just moving like a snail. So what I'd recommend is making your cloner object not visible in the editor. So just double click, you get that red circle. So now all we see is a matrix, but if we render, we can see our cubes now. So that's pretty nifty. Uh, and we get fast response time. So if we just put on a shader on this cloner, throw on, ooh, there we go. We got something, throw in a physical sky. And the lighting's working and everything. So that's the basic idea of that. So, don't leave just yet because there's a little bit more we have to do. So, if we go into our cloner, I mean, no, our uh, displacer, we can edit our uh, noise a little bit more to get a more oceany look. So, first things first, let's turn down the animation speed until we get, ooh, we're still running pretty slow. Uh, if you go back into your cloner, you can see everything is not visible, it's still having to do all these calculations and it's still running fairly slow. Uh, so let's just pause this real quick. 
and go to our cloner and set that back to linear. And this will set it back to object later. This will just help us when we're editing. So go back into our displacer and let's turn down the animation speed quite a bit to like 0 0.2, maybe 0.1. There, that, that's pretty good. So now we're just getting some slow evolution. Now, this is just to add a little bit more randomness to our scene. What we actually really want or care about is our movement. So if we turn up our movement on one of the axes, preferably one of the X or the Z, y, you know, Z axes, and then turn up the percentage, we'll get some movement, and it looks like magic. Uh, these are very sensitive, so I'd recommend using pretty low numbers. There we go. That's pretty cool. Now, we're getting more of like a wave simulation, but as you can see, we're getting these weird like troughs and crests at like these little points. You know, it kind of, it kind of looks more like a hill rather than a wave. So to create a more like unified wave look, instead of this hilly look, we're gonna take, and in our relative scale, we're just gonna pump that up, pump up one of the Y or the Z scale things. Now we're getting much more uniform looks. Let's turn that up even just a little bit more, maybe around 300. And there we're getting some really nice unified wave looks. And I'm pretty pleased with that. It looks like a Minecraft earthquake. And, oh, oops, we have to change our cloner back to object, which will make it run a little bit slower, but it'll be necessary. So change it back to object. And now, if we hit render, there, it's still there. And it all should be working pretty well. So right now, we still have this cube object, which is fine for our editing purposes. But as you can see in our final render, we have more of these peggy, actual like Lego pieces in the final render. So let's go into my other project and find, oh, there we go. So this is like a Lego brick that I created really, it has really, really low poly, poly count, which is really necessary for this project because if you have so many polygons, especially if you're seeing them so far away, it's not necessary and it's just gonna create your problems down the line. Uh, so let's go into my final, there we go. Uh, and just copy this brick and throw it into our new project. And then we're going to replace our cube in our cloner with this object right here. And it's the right scale right now, so that's, that's pretty good. So grab that, throw it in the cloner, get rid of our cube. And now if we hit render, voila, we got bricks. Uh, so now, if we look at our texture that we're using for these bricks, it, I'm using a variation shader, which gives us a few different hues of blue, which is pretty cool. And if we hit render, it's all showing up right. It's throwing a physical sky. And you know, it's looking pretty nice, I'd say. Uh, maybe we go to time and location and make it more of like an evening setting. Get more shading. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm pretty pleased with these results. And Really, these concepts can be applied to several different things. I can't think of any right now, but uh, I'm sure down the road I'll figure out some more implications and maybe I can share them with you guys. But I hope you guys learned something from this tutorial. And in the description, I'll post a download to the Lego brick itself because, I don't know, maybe some of you probably don't like modeling. And I can't say blame you. Sometimes modeling is a hassle, but uh, I'll hand out that that Lego brick so you can create your own animations much e easier and uh, don't have to fiddle around with that sort of aspect of this. So I'll throw that in the description. Uh, aside from that, I'll try posting out, posting more Cine 4D tutorials sometime. Uh, I might even put out some After Effects or Ableton Live tutorials because I've done a few of those in the past, but uh, I just haven't been very consistent with my upload schedule. and. The reason I'm screwing around with things right now in this video is because I had to re-record the audio three times because my mic was being all annoying. But yeah, so yeah, like I said, hope you learned something from this, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.